In this video, unexpectedly, I am driving a 2015 Honda S660, which lives in Tennessee. As you can see, we're not in Tennessee, we're actually in Devon. So it's a, an interesting tale already. The Honda S660 was introduced in 2015. This is from that first year of production, so it's quite an early one. And uh, they've just sadly announced um, that production is gonna end in March next year. And uh, that's a shame because this is one of only two K cars. So they're built to the K car dimensions in Japan. So you've got a maximum length, width, engine size, and power output. And the only other car that matches this car is the Daihatsu Kopen. There is a second generation we didn't see in Europe. Uh, so yeah, very rare car and very, very specialized. Uh, it, it is mid-engine. The engine is out of the N1 um, K car, uh, but mounted at the back. So this is very much a baby NSX. Now I've driven an NSX and I found it a bit too powerful um, for public roads. So it'll be interesting to see how this compares. Um, but I think we'll start with having a look at the engine. We bring you round. Now I shall pop the little lever and then there's a little switch just there. And here we go, a little manual stalk. Here is what you can see of the tiny little three cylinder engine. Twin cam, um, coil on plug. Under this cover is a tiny little turbocharger. So this um, 659cc, I think it is, um, 660 being the maximum you can have, but it produces 63 brake horsepower. So that's a pretty healthy power output for what is a tiny, tiny little engine. Uh, this one, it's allied to a six speed manual gearbox. You could optionally have a seven speed CVT with paddle shifters. So there's no shortage of technology here. What there is a shortage of is um, luggage space. There is um, pretty much none here, and there's precious little here at the front as well. There should actually be a little tray that goes there, and into that tray you can put the folding roof. Um, this uh, section is like a targa section, can be unbolted, we'll do that a bit later on and it would be stowed away there, but that bit seems to be missing. Perhaps it's still in Tennessee, but here you can see the steering rack and the front mounted radiator and also air conditioning condenser and all that sort of stuff up here, but um, seemingly no spare wheel and definitely not very much in the way of luggage space. Right, the next trick is me trying to fold myself into it. It is um, compact. But once you're in, it's actually really, really pleasant. And uh, I, I love the dashboard ahead of me. Um, I'm just gonna start the engine so we get the dashboard to light up. So yeah, we've got all these things going on. It's beeping at me because I've not got my seatbelt on. Uh, it's very minimalist in here. If I just bring you in, this is all we've got on the center console. There's not very much at all. It's basically heater controls. Uh, there is a stereo and you control it via this button here. And then it tells me um, the radio's on. And uh, now we're on medium wave. I don't know how to turn the radio off, I now realize. Got the rear window open. You can open and close the rear window. I've done that mostly for noise reasons. All the better to hear the tiny little engine. But yeah, six speed gearbox, tiny little stubby gear lever, but actually a fair bit of space. Look, I've got space for my foot to go when it's not on the clutch pedal. Uh, oh, we can turn the traction control off if we're feeling silly. Uh, it's got cruise control, um, lights as you'd expect, windscreen wipers, stand clear, camera lady. We're going to wash the windscreen, there we go. You didn't stand clear enough, did you? But yeah, good overlap, no triangle of doom, very nice wiping performance. We've got a mist function and you go down for all the various settings. That's how I like it. Uh, we've got automatic lights um, or you can just control them manually as well. 12 volt power outlet tucked down here. Tiny little glove box, which you can't get very much in and you can lock it. And uh, there's a little something there. I don't know what that is, but yeah, it's um, surprisingly cozy in here, but uh, I suppose we'd better go for a drive really, because that's what this car is really all about. I'm gonna put my lights on just so we're more visible because this car is so very, very tiny. But yeah, this car actually belongs to the Lane Motor Museum in Tennessee. And it came over here for a show that got cancelled. And at the moment, it's just kind of floating around in Europe. It's been all over Europe over the past year and uh, had quite a few adventures. Uh, so let's have a few more in it. But yeah, I'm, I'm 
amazed because I love the Lane Motor Museum. I so want to visit the place. It's so special. It has so many interesting cars. It has a Volkswagen XL1, which I have actually driven. But uh, let's concentrate on this. So we're stuck at Village Speed, very pretty here in Devon. Aha, national speed limit. Let's drop to second. It's certainly trying very hard to sound like a Honda NSX, but performance is frankly a little bit ordinary. It's uh, because it's the maximum power you're allowed in a K car. Very close ratio, this six speed gearbox, really good brakes. Yeah, this is um, feeling wonderful. We got up to 90 kilometers an hour there, which is um, about 55 miles an hour. So it's performance you can actually use on regular roads. And uh, that's what makes the difference to me. I'm not now sitting here going, I'm in a really uncomfortable sports car waiting for a chance to accelerate because actually it is quite comfortable. Sure, the center console is a bit close to the old leg, but uh, the seat is really comfortable. For those of a smaller body size, I will hasten to add, the uh, bolsters are hugging my waist um, very securely, it, uh, I quite like it, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, yeah, I, it's just really, really comfortable. The ride is actually surprisingly comfortable. I will say it's not quite as comfortable as the Fiat X19, which is now my benchmark for sports car comfort, but uh, it's really not far off. And look at this dramatic mist. It's a lovely day to be um, driving around Devon, as long as you don't like sunshine. And we're in sixth gear, just cruising along at a smidge over 2,000 revs. Uh, the current custodian of the vehicle does report that one downside is the cruise control uh, won't let you set a speed higher than the maximum speed limit in Japan. And uh, so that's um, 62 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. If you want to drive faster than that, you have to operate the throttle pedal yourself. And uh, that's a, a reminder, these cars were only ever sold in Japan. I have no idea what the production figures are. I would really like to know, actually. I can't imagine there were that many. These aren't cheap cars. I know one has come to the UK and was imported by Torque GT um, in Devon, actually. They're not too far away from here. And I believe that car cost £15,000 ready to go in the UK. So, uh, I mean, it's a technological tour de force. This isn't just uh, a, a cheap keep the engineered sports car there's proper development in it and it feels it that's the weird thing about k cars there have been sports cars i'm just going to do that rear window up a bit oh there we go um there are sports cars there are tiny little four by fours that have full functionality uh, there are little pickups like marty from marty car mods has got at the moment the k car range of vehicles is huge um, and so much development even though they aren't really um, built for anywhere else but Japan, where they, they enjoy massive tax breaks. That's why K cars are a thing there. But I believe Lane Motor Museum bought this car brand new, so they've owned it since 2015. Power is produced at 6,000 revs, but it seems to be redlined to seven and a half, so. That's crazy. It sounds like we're going a million miles an hour. We just reached the, the legal speed limit for the road. Ah, oh, this is fun. This is the ethos of power, less is more. This is entirely usable power on the roads, but I think what is surprising me, it's a bit like the Fiat X19. Yes, we've got a bit of road now, but it actually feels like something you could live with very comfortably on a daily basis, as long as you didn't actually have to buy any shopping, because there is nowhere to put it. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I thought I was going to like this car, but yeah, I really do. I'm going to lower my window again. Oh, 
Uh, I forgot to mention, there is a sport mode. Uh, if I press the button, it makes the dashboard go red. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Yeah, that, that seems to be all it does because it can't make it more powerful because there's a limit on the power it can have anyway. And certainly if you put your foot down, it doesn't feel any more powerful. But uh, yeah, this is just great. Great that the ethos of the MG Midget just lives on in Japan. In terms of steering, uh, it has got power assisted steering, which it absolutely does not need. That was a very nice Renault Clio. And uh, that's a bit of a downside. It makes it easy to live with around town, but there's not a fat lot of feel going on. One thing that really isn't small in this car is the door mirrors. They're enormous. They're huge. So much vision. On the other hand, the sun visors are ridiculously small, even compared to Miss Hubnut's tiny hand. Oh, hi, favourite road sign. How does this car manage to be so much fun with just 63 brake horsepower? But it's when you get to the bends, it's just, oh. So confidence inspiring, it's just a joy to drive. This really is a sports car for public roads. I will say this little gear lever is just absolutely joyous to use. It's an absolute delight. Uh, the over the corner blind spot visibility isn't always great though. Just look how little the movement is. It's just, oh. Beautiful. So what else the sport button does is it gives you a little boost gauge on the dash, so that's quite funky. Squeeze in. I'm getting in there, I'm getting in there. So that's uh, quite amusing. And uh, I think we should probably do a 0 to 60 test if we can. I think the road ahead is fairly smooth. Wait for the van to clear out of the way. Whoa, sorry, sorry, Lane Motor Museum. Lot of gear changes. That's 60 miles an hour. Not particularly quick, but uh, hilarious nonetheless. This car really does make me smile a lot. Um, should we go? Yeah, yeah. I think probably better than sitting in somebody's drive forever. <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, that's quite breezy with the window down. Oh, what a shame Honda are killing this car off. Honda are doing amazing things with electric cars, but electric cars don't make that sort of a noise. And as much as I actually like electric cars, there's just something about that angry little growl of an engine that's the capacity of two cans of Coke. But I just find so so desirable well this really is one of those cars i just don't want to give back that is just so much fun it's got so much character uh, which isn't something you expect of a car which is only six years old so um i'm absolutely gutted a that honda doesn't sell these anywhere but japan and b that they're going to kill it off it's just adorable it's amazing so uh I hope you've enjoyed that little road test. Thank you ever so much to the Lane Motor Museum in Tennessee for letting me drive it. I do hope to actually make it to the museum myself one day. That would be um, a most remarkable day. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to head to the Hubnut store and buy lovely merchandise. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. I'm going, I'm keeping it, I'm, I'm, I'm going, bye.
we didn't do roof so there's a, a catch here which I need to release and the same again on the other side and I think there's one in the middle as well so we just ping that oh it does make you make old man car and old man noises this car and then we should be able to roll it up like so see it's easy there we go and now i've got a roof i can't put anywhere because the storage box is missing i suppose if it was on my own i could put it in the passenger footwell and uh, I, I imagine that makes uh, i'm just going to rest it just there for a moment i bet that makes getting in quite a lot easier oh yeah That's now simple. Well, that's one of those you wonder, how on earth did you actually manage that? Uh, that's, that's gone wrong. Let's not do that. Let's not. Hucky, how? <laughs> this car's hilarious. 